we'll uh, start our meeting back up. We have uh, Jennifer Holler with us uh, and Gus Selick uh, from VHCB. <clears throat> and um, they're um, with us this morning to discuss uh, uh, farm labor, housing, and housing uh, in general on, on farms. And um, I guess, Gus, um, we, back a week or two or three ago, uh, we had Dan Baker in from UVM and Buster Caswell, I think. And yep. um, I don't know if, if you received uh, any of the information that Dan presented to us on their uh, research and follow up uh, from from his research, <clears throat> but it, what it showed uh, the committee was that we're really we're really slacking on farm labor housing, uh, you know, overcrowdedness. Um, uh, poor, some poor conditions, um, and like he has the numbers, and and so we we dug into that a little more and found uh, that there's uh, USDA has a, a federal program that uh, has two or three different sections or segments to it. And Michael O'Grady, our council person, has has done a, some research on that. And I guess what we wanted to chat with you about is because you're the um, guy that does the housing stuff, and and actually has a couple of dollars to do it with. If if we could put something together on a trial basis maybe or, or something to try to move into that area to some degree to get some of this farm labor housing updated and have it so it's presentable. So when we bring immigrants in, or, you know, or these foreign workers that at least they have a decent place to, to uh, be able to live while they're here. So I don't know if you folks have thought about that, Gus. I bet you have. Um, and get your take on it. Um, so I'm, I'm familiar, but not intimately familiar with Dan's uh, research um, and uh, this is a longstanding issue, and I really think uh, goes to a broader issue of of how Vermont um, manages um, quality in housing uh, and enforces codes generally. And I think there's there's discussion of that going on uh, in in the state house as well, and has been for for quite a number of years. Um, from our perspective, what we did. And I actually had a meeting with uh, Secretary Tebbets and his team on this issue um, a couple weeks ago. Last year, we last year we commissioned a report on farm labor housing. We're expecting it in mid-April. A fellow named John Ryan, an associate uh, of his, has been working on it, and Dan's research is part of his report. Um, so I don't have the report. I had a preliminary discussion with John about a month ago. And uh, what he said to me was that the number one thing we really needed to focus on, some kind of revolving fund to help repair housing that's in poor shape. And so I think that's one of the things that we are planning on. Um, we always appreciate the opportunity to bring federal money into the state um, and leverage it as much as we possibly can. I understand, but I'm not an expert here, that there have been a number of barriers in using the rural development programs, um, but we would be happy to experiment with trying to work with rural development to, and with the farm community um, 
to bring um, to bring those funds in. There's both an on-site farm labor housing program. I think that's been used more. And I think the off-site program has never been used in Vermont. Um, and that may also go to um, uh, the status of some of our farm laborers uh, in terms of that. Um, uh, so those are some of the barriers, but I think these are, we definitely would like to move ahead on the repair side of things. And we would be happy to look at whether there's a way to help farmers use these resources. Uh, one of the issues I think with a, with a loan program is, you know, what happens to the housing if you don't have a, the circumstances of the farm change and you don't have the need for it for farm labor. And I don't think USDA looks kindly on leasing it out to people other than farm workers or retired uh, farm workers. Um, so that's yeah. been one of the barriers. And under our statute, our fund, we're supposed to use invest in housing that will be permanently affordable. And that sometimes causes people to say, well, we don't want your money in the deal because we want to be able to do something else with the property down the road. Um, but having said that, and knowing that the governor's recommendation uh, is quite um, large this year, and he wants us to focus on workforce, among other things, and farm labor is absolutely part of our workforce, we would appreciate the opportunity to, to make that a part of the focus of our, of our work in the coming year. Yeah. Last thing I would say to you is um, we will need, you know, as you know, we don't do this work. We, we work with community based partners. So I've begun a discussion with the Champlain Housing Trust, which works in Franklin County and some in Addison County. Um, uh, well, I think we're managing we were a repair on, program. We Go were going to design this, Gus, for Orleans and Essex County, not not Franklin and Chittenden County. Well, I, no, I, I, I was going to you represent two Franklin County towns. <laughs> yes, I was going to remind of that. And, and also say so the other organization I've begun the discussion with is Rural Edge, which yeah. obviously covers Orleans County. Yeah. So, um, that would get us to the biggest, the biggest farm counties. So we've begun that discussion. One of the things John said to me is this is an issue that really needs a champion it's probably going to need outreach from the co-ops and support from them as well uh, to make something good happen. Yeah. Um, the uh, Michael, you want, did you want to run over a little bit about what you learned uh, from your uh, quick research that that you dug up? Uh, so. Um... Gus, this morning, and Jen, this morning, I talked with um, a staffer at, at USDA Rural Development's Vermont office, and she specifically does the rural housing and rural repair grant program, not the farm labor program. And she basically said that the, the rural housing and rural repair would not be ideal because one of the eligibility requirements of that is that the that the property is owner occupied, um, and that that basically eliminates the ability to use tenants. Which we started talking a little bit about the farm labor program, which she is not the most versed in, but she said the uh, gave the issue of the on-site off-site. She referenced the fact that there is a citizenship um, requirement. But she said for the on-site program, they don't really run into that much in Vermont because they provide the assistance to the farmer um, who's the, the owner of the farm. And, but I, I, I'm looking at the, the requirements right now and, and the way that they define a domestic farm laborer is requires citizenship or in the states um, legally. So I have to, to track down with um, the head of the, the Vermont Farm Labor Program that um, requirement. But one of the things that she did say is that nonprofit associations can apply for this assistance. Um, and then 
use the money uh, according to the criteria um, for the program. It, from what I'm looking at, the rules, that seems largely for the off-farm um, program, for the off-farm housing, and then you have the citizenship issue again. Um, so so I, I, I think there's a little bit of a labyrinth that I need to figure out um, on how this could work. Um, hey, so that, I think, that's, what, that's what I know. I think the important thing, Michael, that you found out this morning is that, gosh, there is money available. Yeah. That's the important thing. Is there's federal money available. And, you know, so we could match it up with, with uh, you know, some of our money and, and that would stretch everything out of, of ways. Um, the, are there any, if any of you guys on the committee have questions, just uh, Chris? Michael, the, the owner occupied, uh, you said, the you used a phrase that was said something like the the property uh, i i guess you know it seems to me that the property in many cases is owner occupied but the building is probably not and i i just wonder if i'm hearing a distinction there or uh, uh, that's just wishful thinking so uh, i'm i'm under the the rural i'm looking at the rural uh, development single family housing direct home loan program. Um, and this is for uh, construction or purchase of a single family home. And one of the eligibility requirements is that the applicant needs to agree to occupy the property as your primary residence. Okay. Yeah, I think we're more, I, I'm at least thinking of repairs and upgrades. Um, yeah. Gus, when you conserve a farm, is there a discussion or a requirement around code at that moment? Um, there is not. Often the buildings are excluded from the easements, um, and there is not. I, I would say to you that in general, you know, Vermont's approach to code enforcement is pretty lax, and um, you know, I. Um, I know lots of people don't like the heavy hand of government, but I think this is a place where, whether we're talking about on-farm housing or rental housing in general, um, we probably need a higher degree of oversight than we currently have across the state in all forms of rental housing um, to help people focus on the things that they need to do to keep people safe. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Gus, um, would would you need any um, if we were to pursue this, or if you were to pursue this, would would you need any language changes or anything, or could you just with your jurisdiction move forward? Well, in general, what I'd say is that we are from the governor's proposal. We're already asking for some language changes. Uh, and I think the House has reacted, the other bodies reacted well to that, um, just for flexibility so that we can spend yeah. money in the, in the conservation and agriculture areas. And I think in terms of, um, we may decide, but it, uh, I think we have a little time to ask you for a little bit of language that would just give us some flexibility about running a repair program where we may not uh, get permanent affordability and that kind of thing. So we may ask you for a, a change or two to, that would go with this special appropriation uh, yeah. in order to stand up a repair program. But let us get back to you on that as an issue. And, and Jen, I think, has a thought on the, on the language in front of yeah. uh, Hi, Jen. the now. Good morning. Um, Jen Good morning. Holler with VHCB. Um, VHCB doesn't require any authorizing language change, which for this falls you know, within what we are authorized to do um, under our statute. Um, but as Gus mentioned, there is the $20 million in one-time funding that the governor recommended as an increase for this year. And as the budget was submitted, it, um, it said that that was all to be for housing initiatives, but we've worked with the administration and committees on the house side 
on language that would allow us to use up to five million of that for um, conservation or uh, farm viability program activities. And so we would hope when that bill comes over, the budget comes over to the Senate that you might be able to um, ask the Appropriations Committee to support that. That said, if that funding comes through, that gives us the resources we need and we don't need anything specific around, um, around farm labor housing. And that's our intention to do that. Um, one other thought I had was that the, um, I know that when you were working with the CRF funds, you, you found a way to get some assistance to people who aren't documented or who might not qualify for the federal funds. But the, um, the beauty of the VHCB state dollars is that we will have the flexibility to help that housing regardless of the status of the residents there if we, if we do set up a revolving fund. Yep. And then the last thing I'll mention is that the report that we've commissioned will be done on April 15th, just as a reference point and can share it with you at that time. And um, I don't know if it'd be helpful, but uh, Linda, Linda has a copy of um, Dan Baker's report that she could forward you folks. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, it, it's always most helpful if, if we don't have to do a lot of language change and all that if we can yeah the important job and and i know gus and we understand is get the work done you know get get the job done and get the bases covered um but uh i think i feel that if we could get a bunch of this federal money to do some cost sharing uh that it would make your dollars go a lot further and and we'd get you know more work done with less of our state dollars and and um do you do you uh, see nonprofits can apply for that so could you apply for that gus or would you have like roll edge and and those people apply for it that that's usually how it works is that they, they're really in the communities and they're the direct interface with the with the people who are uh, going to end up in the housing so that's usually how we would do it rather yeah. we we could be the applicant but i think it would be more effective if people who are not based in montpelier but based out in your communities actually are the applicants for those funds i do need to just give you a caution um and then i'll tell you what I hope the antidote is going to be is that rural development is a pretty rigid agency. Um, they're not usually very flexible. Under the, before the Trump era, they had a director who was interested in granting waivers and doing um, lots of demonstration projects. So I'm hoping that now that we, that we have a new secretary at USDA, we're going to get the same approach where they're going to want to do demonstration programs and they'll waive some of their rules. But if we go with the rules that are in place, there's a reason there are reasons that these programs and particularly the offsite program has never been used in Vermont that are hard to overcome. So it's going to take some some of that kind of work to really pull those dollars in. I'm committed to trying to find a way um we actually got them for the first time anywhere to grant a waiver so that we could do replacement ho replacement homes and mobile home parks on leased land uh with when secretary vislak was in office previously they'd never done that before but that's what it's gonna it's probably gonna take that kind of creativity that we didn't have in the last four years to use that program and and who who does that, Gus? Do you do you lobby our congressional people to put something in the budget bill, or or how how does what avenue um, do you take to get the waiver? Well, it it it's what I would call a conspiracy of goodwill. So there's a good idea at the community level. Uh, the congressional delegation might send a letter to the secretary or the head of rural develop the rural development office. You know, uh, last time around, Ted Brady was the state director, and he was interested in lots of experimentation. We don't know who the new state director is going to be, but if you get a good person in that job, 
it takes everybody just sort of saying, this is a great idea, let's give it a try. Um, uh, uh, but we haven't had to have things in the federal budget bill to, to do that when we were able to get those, those waivers. We just needed somebody really willing to try something new. Yeah, well, that's, that's good. Chris? Uh, Gus, you mentioned that this issue really needs a champion, and um, I have a feeling this might be it. <laughs> we, I think the folks assembled here, you know, I, I'm not sure where else we look for a champion. Um, one of the programs, as I understand it, that exists already is a federal loan program. It's a low interest, 1% or something. Is there, do you think, uh, and, and, I say this with the context that we're all trying to figure out more options and, and smarter people than me are gonna pull some ideas together. But one of them is that we would take that program and buy down so it effectively becomes a zero interest loan program for our farmers or, or you know, even though 1% is pretty darn low. Um, do you think you have the flexibility for that kind of approach or is that part of this that's just going to have to be evolving as, as the budget moves forward? Um, well, I, you know, every farm is different. And as you know, some, some farmers are pretty cash crunched right now, given the state of the economy. So I think whenever you're asking somebody to take on more debt, even at 0%, it's a, it's a challenge. And I think that's why the chair is saying, you know, can you, can you put your money together with this so that further lowers the amount of debt that they need to borrow in total? So zero percent is good, but it, you know if your if your cash if your cash flow is really tight, um, that's a you know then investing in a new home uh, can be difficult. Uh, you know, in my experience, lots of farmers have been very happy to buy a used mobile home and say that's good enough. And I think that's a piece of why we're hearing that there's a real need for repair. Because, you know, if you buy an older home, um, you always have issues. Um, and, and I think that just reflects the fact that, you know, the price of milk is constricted. Some people have lost milk contracts. Other people are at the beginnings of their careers in agriculture. They're, you know, and it's a, it takes a lot of capital and a lot of to be a farmer these days and uh, and people are pretty well leveraged. So I think that's that's just generally a big challenge. And I do think most farmers uh, want their labor living on the farm or very close by. Um, yeah. Thanks. So the, uh, so you, we kind of, or you talked about, and I think we kind of talked in, down in, in the other room that I'm in about setting aside and giving you flexibility already on the Senate side with that 5 million. Um, but we, we still wanna do conservation things where it's a good deal for us. And it, you know, stuff isn't getting any cheaper, even though there's doesn't seem to be a lot of money around them. And how much do you have any idea uh, what we we could even think about putting together for this this little uh, housing deal? Um, we you know, the budget numbers all changed pretty fast as the administration put its budget together. Um, but I, I'm inclined to think that, you know, a repair fund in the the first year in the neighborhood of a half a million dollars and let's see how it goes. Um, you know, and I could be persuaded that it ought to be a little more, a little less. We don't want money just sitting in the bank. We want it to flow out. Uh, no. But but that that was my initial thought, but I haven't even proposed that to my board. I have mentioned that as a number to Secretary Tebbets. Um, and, um, you know, so, we want to get something started and see how we can make it work. Um, well, we talked earlier before you came along and we figured if we could get some federal match money to go with some of your money, you know, somewhere between five and 
500 and a million dollars, but yet make sure that you have the discretion of moving that back if things, you know, don't, if they, they don't move along like they should, then you just go put it back into regular housing or whatever. Yep, I, I, that sort of approach, you know, that, that's the sort of thing we would do is we don't, we don't want money sitting no. in our bank account that doesn't do Vermonters any good. And so, but I thought, you know, if we get a half million dollars on the street and it moves quickly, then you add to it. And if it is sitting there, maybe you pull some of it back um, yeah. and we'll see what, what the take up is, is going to be. Yeah. And, you know, sitting in the bank though, with all that interest, you know, that one, one and a quarter percent, you're, you're really doing pretty good with it in the bank. Or somebody's well, the interest good rates good. have gone down. It's even lower. Yeah, have gone down, but again, we always want the money back in the communities. So You're yeah, darn right. That's where it does the most good. Yeah, Jan. Mr. Chair, when I was racing to make all my points earlier, I could. It looked like um, it looked like Mike had a couple questions, and I want to be sure that Gus and I don't miss those if he has questions for us. Uh, my my only question was about whether or not you need flexibility in that 20 million for um, the ready fund or to use any of that money for ready or is that going to be taken care of through your base? We run that because we run that through the farm and forest viability program. The language says that we can use up to 5 million for conservation yeah. activities or farm and forest viability program activities. So that covers ready. Um, it could be more explicit, but our intent would be to, okay. to expand that. That's all I, all I need to want. And uh, Gus, while you're with us, uh, didn't did we talk down in a props about doing uh, two two seventy five for ready on the fast track budget part, or did we not? We didn't, and I'm not. I don't think that that's necessary at this point. I think we're okay. you know we we um we're a little slower on ready this year because. The staff was so busy with the CRF program, helping farmers access those grants. So that's a second half of this year activity yeah. rather than the first half when they were focused on CRF. Yeah. And um, to, to, move, to move this forward and to help the uh, Farm Labor Housing Coalition people um, should, you know, to let them know that that there's going to be some movement on this, and and should we get a letter from you, get or do us do a letter and send it to them? Um, yeah. Well, I I traded emails with Mr. Caswell a couple days at the beginning of the week. He sent me one, and I sent him one back. Um, but I'd be happy to write you a letter, and you could then share it with him um or write to write to him and copy write to you and copy him on it and yep. that'll do the, the, the but if you want to do something more official um happy well, to with you about it i i i don't really need to up here maybe brian campion would uh like a letter that he could put on the front page of the banner uh helping him down in Bennington County. Uh, him and Senator Sears have a little thing going about who gets above the fold in the paper. <laughs> and so no, I'm just kidding. No, if you just do that, Gus, uh, that would be that would be fine. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, anything else from any of the committee members? No. Uh, did you have any questions for us, Gus, on any of the, you know, any of the projects or issues, uh, anything we can help you with? Uh, I, you know, I think our key issue is just going to be the flexibility. Um, and as, as we said, the other body seems to be supportive of that at the moment. Uh, but we wanted to make you aware of it. Um, 
just yeah, we were we were very grateful that not just did the House Ag Committee su support flexibility, but the House General and Housing Committee also supported the flexibility. So there's a recognition uh, that you know our rural communities need help, and through the viability program and the Ready program, those are ways to help rural communities along with our conservation work. So yes, yep. well, we certainly all. Plan. We certainly all have to work together to uh, make the most of what we have. Um, yeah. If there are no other questions. Um, I, I think Jen had one other point to make. I was just going to, in case it's helpful, uh, just going to note that the fast track bill, the CRF bill does have um, money, uh, CRF money to be allocated to VHCB for housing. And I, um, just want to uh, clarify that that's specifically for housing the homeless related to the pandemic. We would not be able to use that funding for this particular purpose. And then the 20 million in one-time funding the governor recommended is for all that broader range of housing needs, whether it's home ownership or rental housing. And that's what we would um, be able to use um, for the farm labor housing. So just because there's multiple bills moving this year, I thought it may be helpful to make that distinction. So that would be the July 1 funds, right? The 20 yeah. million would be the July 1 funds, yes. And there's and, there's a and, CRF money in the fast track bill about to land in Senate appropriations. I don't know when you get how, back from town meeting break that that has money for housing, but that's very specifically for homelessness related to the pandemic. Yeah. And how how long do you think it would take Gus or Jen to for like Roll Edge or Champlain Housing or any of those groups to get geared up to try to get this some federal money going. I hope we'll be hard at work on it this summer. So the July one date would not mess anything up then. No. Because because they, we want, we want to get that federal money if we possibly can. Yes, we do. Yeah, and um, so, and you're going to talk, you or Jen or somebody's going to talk to those groups, right? About working we will. on. Yeah. Yeah, I've already begun a discussion with both of them. Yeah, and we participate yeah. in that. Um, loose stakeholder group that Dan and Buster talked to you about. We've been, we're part of that group. Yeah. And they're aware well, of the study coming too. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I think everything, I think my day's going quite well. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that. And I hope the whole committee <laughs> today goes well and that you have a <laughs> wonderful uh, break next week. Yeah. Well, I know thanks. everybody's been working hard and, and, I hope you can get away from Zoom at least a little bit. Won't that be a break? <laughs> um, well, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Gus and Jan. Uh, and uh, you'll have a break with us out of town. So um, good luck to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank th th thanks a lot. Okay. Take and, care. Yeah. So I think committee, uh, isn't it strange how we do stuff and then the ag department comes right in and gets going on it? It's pretty good. Um, we all get to pull in that buggy in the same direction there. We may get something done. <laughs> um, the, uh, but that I think uh, Gus has got a good handle on it and um, the um, Linda, you're going to send Gus that report. Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, any other comments from anybody? Um, I I don't uh, know if, if if Baker if we ought to get him tuned in so that he pushes the coalition to push to get stuff rolling or 
I mean, I, you know, we've, we've, as you just said, kind of stimulated the right discussion. I think, I think for my money, we got to just keep an eye on it and not let it drop. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll review it then from time to time, uh, check in with, of course, they aren't going to do anything till July by the sound, but these housing agencies, they've got to start applying for some of this, this money or it'll be gone and there won't be, it won't be there. Um, anything, uh, Michael, from on your part that we need to think about or do or look at? I can't think of anything. I'm still going to try to track down the, the farm labor person in Vermont, housing um, person in Vermont. But uh, just looking at the rules, the federal rules for that, it's, it's going to be hard. Um, the nonprofit has to certify that it's going to um, comply with all the, the tenant housing requirements. And there's a there's a citizenship requirement for that, and so it's it it would be tough for that nonprofit to to do that. And then, are you basically, you know, a significant portion of the farm labor community in Vermont might not qualify? But and you so, know, you talk about we talk about that, Michael. But I was reading uh, this morning that down in freaking uh, Texas, they've gone through and rebuilt whole apartment houses under farm labor housing. And, um, you know. Uh, well, that's, that's the off farm multi-unit program. Yeah, but that's more stringent, I thought you said. It, it is, it is. And they're down I, there redoing whole blocks. <laughs> so I, I don't, I, you know, I can't comment on how they're doing it, but I look at those rules and, and I, I'll still follow up. I, I think it's going to be, it, it's going to be difficult. Well, that's Washington for you. Um, yeah. One there thing, was, the, uh, the, the, the seasonal, employees that come on visas they would still qualify um but you have to be you have to be in the the united states legally um and i thought i thought earlier you said something to the effect that if the farmer is the owner of the property and it's only for farm labor tenant housing that... right for the for, there's the off farm where where the the nonprofit organization can be the the applicant but then there's the on farm where the farmer is the applicant yeah and so the person i talked to this morning said that they just look at the eligibility requirements for the farmer right right and... so on farm might not be as much of an issue, but you're not going to be having the nonprofit being involved in that application. But that's a loan. But that's a loan. So we got to figure out how to get around who's going to be doing the application to have on farm, because most of the farmers like to have their their veggie pickers their you know the milkers uh, their sheep herders uh, they like to have them on the property if at all possible so so we got to figure out some way to fix these who's going to apply for the money to fix on farm properties. Yeah, and, and you're gonna, you know, I'm looking at 
what one of the requirements is for both programs. It's an occupancy restriction and it says an eligible household must include a domestic tenant um, that is a, is a domestic farm laborer. Yeah. Um, and so a domestic farm laborer is defined as, as meeting the citizenship requirement. Um, okay. <laughs> So I, I, I have to dig into this more. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we, we certainly have time, but you know, I, I was wondering from the other day when we decided to talk about this this morning, if, <clears throat> if a group like um, Farm Bureau or Rural Vermont or NOFA, or, you know, if those nonprofit groups like that would be interested in participating and helping out with, <clears throat> with farm labor housing at all, and you know, I just thought I'd run that by the committee and, and, you know, Jackie or, you know, Maddie or some of them might, they might be interested in, in helping to put put this together to some degree. Uh, Brian and then Chris. Yeah, thanks Bobby. Uh, I just actually, we all just got an email from Jackie Folsom saying that she's going to uh, uh, work with Vermont Farm Bureau to uh, get the word out whatever funding's available. So you can bet they'll be working on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, Chris. Yeah, I was going to say something similar. I, I think uh, Gus was saying, suggesting the co-ops um, as partner, but but it's more in the vein of what Brian just said of of telling folks what we end up doing rather than brainstorming with us. Uh, although maybe to the extent they're watching, you know, we clearly need the help. Um, Michael, any sense of whether or not folks at the agency? are also, I mean, this is complicated and hard enough that we haven't done it to date, right? The, the, it, so, so that always suggests to me, it's not a new problem. Uh, we haven't focused enough to, to address it yet, but um, I wonder if rather than only ask you to do the brainstorming, if, if there are folks that you might be aware of over at the agency that are Looking into it, they've now stated this as something they're trying to work on as well. I can always reach out. I'd probably start with uh, Deputy Secretary Eastman and see where that goes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that'd be smart. <laughs> Certainly. Um, you know, any help we can get from any direction. You know, like I said, the main thing is to get the work done, not not play in the mud all day, get out of there and get it done. Um, so anything else, guys? All set. All set? No. Well, um, I think then we'll, um, we'll call it quits and see you at what, 11.30 on the floor. Uh, Chris, uh, we better check with Linda to See if she's heard anything back. Um, yeah, right. I have, not, I have not. So you might want to follow yeah. up on that. Michael, um, you don't know anything about that stuff, do you? I'm sorry. I was looking at an email. Could you repeat the question? This well, is to get uh, bill numbers for our two committee bills. We have the bill numbers. We just, uh, they were, oh. they came in late and uh, I think they're trying to get them on the calendar today, but. Not sure. Do you know what they are, Linda? Uh, S100 is the education bill, and S102 is the uh, other one, the soil compost. compost yeah. So, um, do you, what we want to do, Michael, is um, is S100. Uh, it's it hasn't been posted on the calendar and there i think there's a motion that you can make prior to posting on the calendar you know you stand up 
I move that we move committee, Ag Committee Bill S-100 to education for further review. Uh, and and um, we, we just needed that language to conform with our rules and regs and... What? Yeah. Michael, it's not really a question for you, is it? No. Uh, it's uh, basically you stand up and you, you move that the bill be committed to whatever committee you want it to be committed to. Um, and, and Secretary Bloomer will be able to advise you when and how to do that. Yeah. Bobby, I, I'll, I'll call Bloomer right now and we've got an hour and I'll have him email you and I the specific language. I, I have a feeling it's pen, suspending rules to pending and, entrance on the notice calendar, refer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But yeah. Does that yeah, make sense? I'm happy to, to, to contact Bloomer and get him to email you and I the language we need to use. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So um, have a good hour offer. Thank you.